as a beginner photographer, uh, you will make mistakes guaranteed. The good news is that we all make those same mistakes and you can learn from them. I'll be highlighting 10 common mistakes beginners make in photography and how to avoid them. Let's get started. Raw files contain all the image data captured by your camera sensor, giving you much more flexibility in post-processing. JPEG files compress the data, reducing your ability to make adjustments in post. Always shoot in RAW to retain the highest quality and detail in your photos. If you're still learning how to edit or are too afraid to edit your photos, most cameras will allow you to shoot in RAW and JPEG at the same time, okay? And if you've got dual card slots, you save JPEGs on one card and RAW on the other. This way you can store your RAW images away until you're ready to learn post-processing and then you can always go back and edit them. Imagine trying to learn a musical instrument without learning the chords and, and scales first. You might be able to create some music, but it will be a long process and you won't know how you created that music. Relying solely on automatic settings limits your creative control. Plus, manual mode gives you the understanding of how you did what you did in a particular photo so you can recreate it. Manual mode allows you to adjust the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO independently giving you full control over your exposure and creative vision. You can still use aperture priority or shutter priority modes once you learn manual mode. It'll give you a better understanding of how those two modes work so you'll know how to use them correctly and better. The exposure triangle works hand in hand with manual mode. The exposure triangle consists of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Did we just say those? Think of them as the chords and scales used to create music. In this case, they are used to create your photos. Understanding how these three elements interact with one another, helps you achieve the correct exposure and desired effects in your photos. Take the time to learn how they work together. I have a video about using the exposure triangle and the link is in the description below. When your shutter speed is too slow, any movement, including camera shake, can result in a blurry image. To avoid this, you can use a tripod or you can increase your shutter speed, especially in low light conditions. And if you want to capture movement, you can increase your shutter speed to freeze that motion or you can decrease it a little bit to show a little bit of motion. That's different than being a blurry photo. Formatting your card in the camera ensures it's properly prepared and reduces the risk of data corruption. Always format your card before each shoot to keep your file safe. Do not format your camera SD cards in a computer. You will definitely cause issues with your cards and most likely get some data corruption and possibly lose your photos. While it's natural to shoot from eye level, it can result in mundane and repetitive compositions. Experiment with different angles and perspectives uh, to add interest and variety to your photos. I have a video about perspectives in your photography and the link again is in the description below. It's easy 
to get caught up in buying the latest and greatest equipment, I know that all too well. But great photography is more about mastering your current gear and developing your skills. Spend the time learning your camera and practicing techniques instead. I made a couple videos, one on gear obsession and another on gear acquisition syndrome or gas. And both are linked down below. Composition is crucial in creating visually appealing images. Learn and practice the rules like the rule of thirds, leading lines, and framing to improve your photos. Uh, their overall balance and their interest. There are several videos I made about composition on my channel. Um, I'll link some of them in the description below, but I, I really do have quite a few of them. Remember, you have to learn the rules before you can break them. The histogram is a graphical representation of the tonal values in your image. It helps you understand if your photo is properly exposed. Too far to the right, it's overexposed. Too far to the left, it's underexposed. Learn to read the histogram to ensure you're capturing the best possible exposure. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to make a video about using the histogram. It's definitely a very important tool and you really should know it. And you should also keep it on on your view screen. The small screen can be misleading, making it difficult to judge exposure, focus, and detail accurately. Always review your images on a larger screen to ensure they meet your expectations. Also, make sure you turn on focus peaking and also um, your highlights. Let you know when you blow out your highlights. If you ever get that flashing black and white, it means your highlights are overexposed. You can always expose your bracket your photos to make sure you'll have at least one photo that is exposed correctly. And that's a setting in most cameras, and you can set it usually for either three, five, or seven photos. So definitely a nice little safety feature. By avo avoiding these common mistakes, you'll be well on your way to improving your photography skills. Remember, practice and patience are key to becoming a better photographer. Keep learning and experimenting. And most importantly, enjoy the process. I believe uh, Bob Ross once said, we don't make mistakes, they're happy accidents. Take care, everyone.